Hello, my name is Ellie Carney. I'm part of the Secretariat for InsureTech UK and I'm here with Oliver Woodhouse from Capital Law, who are one of our legal partners. Oliver, thank you for joining us today. So tell me a bit about you and Capital Law and why you got involved in InsureTech UK. Sure. So I'm a regulatory lawyer at Capital Law in their financial services team. Um, day to day, a lot of our work, I'd say probably about 70% focuses on InsureTech. Um, the remainder fintech sort of space, more traditional financial services. Um, and really, so what does that involve? Uh, it's helping businesses with regulatory applications to the FCA, variations of permissions, helping them with regulatory change, um, new legislation that comes in. Brexit's been very topical. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, and then all sorts of uh, commercial and regulatory drafting that will come with that. Um, so that that's my role within capital. but. More broadly, the InsureTech team at Capital is very much a sector focus. We have um, corporate expertise to help with your fundraising, um, employment expertise, people with property experience that have been helping some of our InsureTech members. And, you know, not everyone likes to talk about it, but we do have a great disputes team as well if things don't go uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> always, always good to have it as a backup. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and um, why did Capital Law join InsureTech UK? So I, I was thinking about this actually um, when we talk about questions and to me it's a little bit of a no-brainer. It, it's, it's a great, great body for the industry and the sector in the UK. Um, InsureTech is definitely growing, definitely thriving um, and it, you know, being a legal partner considering our client base it was just a natural fit. Um, and I think one of the big things for me is um, your, your engagement with lobbying, so what you guys have been doing with the HMRC and some of your members. Um, really positive to get involved as well with the PRA workshops that um, have been going on. So mainly, mainly that really. Mm. That's great. Great to hear it's going well from the fight. And so we're <coughs> focusing on more of a topic of regulation and specifically senior managers and certification regime which um, I don't know if you could explain a bit about what that is. Sure, so um, regulation, everyone loves it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's been a lot of regulatory change um, in the UK, certainly over say the past couple of years, we've had GDPR come in, uh, the insurance distribution directive. If we look away from the insurance or the distribution stage, um, of market rather, uh, we've had uh, MIFID for investment firms and payment service regulation as well. Um, GD, uh, so Senior Manager Certification Regime, or the SMCR, uh, is a new piece of the FCA toolkit, I suppose, to um, help regulate firms from a conduct perspective. So what does that mean? It's, it's basically been put together after the financial crisis as um, a tool to help uh, delegation of responsibilities within firms and making sure, you know, from top level to bottom level, who's doing what, how is it being done, and making sure that everyone knows what's going on, in a nutshell. Okay, so is that, is that the focus of why the FCA are rolling it out, or do you think there's another reason? Sure, so I think the FCA probably do have that focus in rolling it out, and so th this rollout we're, we're talking about today is that um, from the 9th of December it'll apply to any FCA solo regulated firm. So quite topical, I suppose, for InsureTech UK's members. Um, I expect the majority will fall into that category. And so it's, it's been in place for banks and insurers for about a year now. And so this rollout is now bringing it to that wider base. So it's, it's obviously having some regulatory involvement with the FCA, similar to your approved persons at the moment for regulated firms. Um, there's just a bit of change of language and a bit more responsibility on firms doing things in-house as well. Okay, and so why shouldn't Shitex be thinking about this, this now, and specifically will the SMCR apply to them? Sure, so um, yes, the, the SMCR will apply to InsureTex. Um, why should you be thinking about it? So, as I mentioned, the SMCR um, is somewhat, in some, to some extent, business as usual. Um, your approved persons will remain regulated by the FCA largely. Uh, the language will just change where those individuals will transition to more than likely senior manager roles. Um, so this will still include your directors, um, anyone responsible for compliance for example. The SMCR just goes another step forwards where there'll be additional aspects for you as say an InsureTech to consider. Um, the certification regime which 
will apply to anyone in your business who perhaps is taking a very senior role that wouldn't fall into that senior manager category or that existing approved person category, um, but might still have some significant responsibility for your um, insurance distribution, say, or how you're engaging with your customers. Um, so the SMCR puts certain responsibilities on you checking those people are suited to their role, checking um, they have appropriate experience, for example, and signing off their competencies. Um, the senior managers element, just moving back to that, there's also a requirement to document how responsibilities are delegated within your firm. Um, so that could be compliance, that could be with your cash and client money, for example. Um, and again, there's certain elements to that as well about checking the rollout of the SMCR for the firm and who's taking responsibility for that as well. And then I suppose the third point for InsureTechs to think about is that um, broadly the SMCR introduces uh, conduct rules that will apply to most people in your firm that are involved in the financial service aspect, the regulatory aspects. Um, the SCA pictured as basically anyone that's not in an ancillary role. So, um, perhaps your HR, your receptionist, you know, so it might be that where insurtechs actually have a small concentrated member of staff, a lot of their staff are caught by that. So there's a few different things to think about um, and the FCA have published some great useful guidance on it which is helpful to familiarise everyone's with, uh, self with. Um, and equally with that 9th of December date approaching, it's, uh, it's important to be thinking about it. Perfect. So, as you said, it's fast approaching. <coughs> what do you think any key takeaways or action points our, our members should be aware of? So, um, I think the key point to note is, you know, the FCA takes a risk-based approach. So, um, we don't think it's going to be any kind of witch hunt if someone isn't perfectly complying with everything by um, this December date. I, I think the important thing is to familiarise yourself with the regime check how um, the different tiers of firms map to your business model. Um, who are your senior managers? Do you have any certification staff? Make sure everything is documented properly as the regime requires. So senior managers need their statements of responsibility to document what they do um, day to day. It's not a job description per se, it's more how um, their responsibilities operate in practice. Uh, if you have any certification regime members, um, again, the FCA have published some really helpful guidance on that. So just making sure you're familiar by the uh, 9th of December date, who falls into that category. And then thereafter, the FCA have given a 12 month transition period uh, to start documenting who's in that regime, that they're fit to do their role um, and rolling out how the conduct rules apply, sorting some training on it. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a big topic. So there's a lot of different things to it that, um, you know, should be given some consideration, but uh, as I said, the FCA have published some really positive things. Um, any queries, uh, Capital Law and the other um, legal partners of InsureTech UK, I'm sure, can help out and give guidance as well. So I think that's probably action points there. Perfect. And if any um, members do want to get in touch with Capital Law to discuss this further, mm -hmm. um, what would be the best way for them to get in touch with you? Sure. So um, Capital Law website has. Um, my details, my colleague Rachel Hillier as well, we uh, lead the financial service regulatory team there and specifically the InsureTech elements. Um, we've been advising a, a lot of different InsureTech clients on sort of rolling out this to fit their business, uh, providing some nice sort of tailored advice, not a one size fits all type thing because it's not intended to be that. So um, all the details on the website. That's okay. great. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, for thank me. you for being such a valuable member of InsureTech UK. Thank you.